So on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go back to Chicago and Governor Greg Abbott, you know, he had Operation Lone Star where he was sending buses to Chicago and many other self-proclaimed sanctuary cities. He said that he wanted to give relief to the border towns. Now, I know about the border towns in Texas. I know people personally that live in the border towns and they are overwhelmed with migrants coming in there. So I do understand why Greg Abbott is saying, Hey, if you want to be sanctuary, I'm going to send them to you. Well, remember Brandon Johnson said that, okay, you sending us some buses. Well, now we're going to start figuring out a way to impound these buses and go ahead on and try to stop Governor Greg Abbott from sending all these buses of migrants of Chicago. Well, Greg Abbott, he has decided to take it up a notch. And he decides to do something else. Let's go ahead and roll that. Families, many with young children in tow, mount the stairs of a state chartered flight from El Paso, Texas to Chicago Tuesday evening. But this was no luxury experience. The plane sent by Texas Governor Greg Abbott, whose office provided this video, touched down at O'Hare's signature terminal. One mother who was on board explained. She said there was more than 100 people on board and we were all like, what's going on? They left us here deserted. By the time Chicago officials even knew the migrant flight had touched down, the city said two unidentified individuals who flew with the plane reportedly fled signature flight and left the scene in an Uber prior to the arrival of police. Already strained Chicago older people are furious. It is despicable. It is inhumane. Um, it's un-American to see that coming from another uh, state. And I think the president needs to intervene. Governor Abbott claimed responsibility for the charter flight, saying Sanctuary City Chicago started obstructing and targeting our busing mission. Texas will now expand our operation to include flights to Chicago. Until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. As you clearly heard that Governor Greg Abbott took responsibility, said, OK, if you're going to stop me from sending buses to Chicago, I'm going to start sending airplanes. Uh, of migrants and let's see how much you're going to stop that. Now, once again, if Biden really wanted to do something about it, he could, you know, when you fly, you have to get clearance from the FAA and he got clearance to fly that plane from, he said El Paso to Chicago. So it doesn't matter what any of them say, no matter how much they gripe brought Biden is good on what he is doing. Unfortunately, because Biden is playing politics and an agenda, the citizens are suffering um, no matter where they're at, whether in Texas having to deal with that crisis for the forever, um, people in Chicago, people in New York, et cetera. Well, recently on December the 14th, they had a city council meeting uh, with Mayor Brandon Johnson. And there were two people that actually got up to spoke that we want to highlight because these are black Americans who are in Chicago and has to live through this and really what's happening on the ground. Because you could talk about Greg Abbott sending them. That's one thing. And you definitely had that conversation, but Greg Abbott isn't in charge of you keeping Chicago a sanctuary city status. Greg Abbott isn't in charge of you blocking the citizens from having a vote. If they want Chicago to stay a sanctuary city, he's not in control of that. He, all this complaining you're doing, but yet you won't in sanctuary city status. That's what I want people in Chicago to listen to Brandon Johnson and those aldermen complaining all day. All they have to do is in sanctuary city status and Greg Abbott would not be sending them no more, but their so-called values um, says that they're going to take in a million to 2 million. Don't, it don't matter. They'll complain about it, but they'll take them in anyway, because they're supposed to be a sanctuary city. Now we know sanctuary cities came in definitely Chicago in the 1980s, but you have to understand America just in general has a lot of outdated things, very outdated. A lot of laws are outdated. Even the constitution in a lot of ways are outdated. Cause you have to understand when they signed that constitution, we were on the plantation, right? So we know today slavery is wrong, right? So even the 13th amendment that says we shouldn't, you know, nobody sh should be a slave yet. They backdoor and says, if you are a prisoner, you can be a slave to the state. Now we all know slavery, no matter in what form is wrong. Right? So there's a lot of things that need to be updated in this country. But unfortunately we have people in this country who are literally relics 
and they don't want to update anything. So this is why you have a 21st century problem because even you, if you have a core, even a corporation's got to update their policies, update their rules, etc., because of the changing times, you understand? So sanctuary city sounded great in the 1980s, but in 2023 going into 2024, that's not really viable now. You understand? So I want you to hear this brother here. Think, uh, and I want you to hear exactly what he has to say. He's a, he's an elder in the community. Now, if all our elders spoke like this brother right here, we wouldn't be in a position that we in. Let's go roll, roll that. Illegal. Call ice. Send them all back. Waiting across the Rio Grande for, and, and don't uh, obey our immigration and naturalization law. And watch my minutes. Because you should have it up here and over here because they steal my minutes. We are the only people in America that was enslaved in America. We are not immigrants. We are not migrants. We belong. Listen. Listen. We are the only people enslaved in America. We didn't come over waiting and looking for something. And when we came over, we did work. But it was free labor that built this country. Black labor that built this country. White power. And to see another group come over here, it's disgraceful. It is un-American. And these rules that you have, the rule, who made these rules? When did the ultimate vote for these rules? When did the people have time to, to participate in making these rules? And one of you all came over to me, Mr. Blakemore, we got little children. What about the black children in the ghetto? We got to make a future for them. These others will move them out. Move us out and then come in to compete with jobs, goods, and contracts and service. The historian Carl Addison say that they have a negative effect on the black community. Read. Reading is fundamental. I don't have to love nobody but me. Self-preservation is the first law of nature. And these black ultimates, I urge you to vote no. Uh, because aren't you black? Aren't you black? Don't you live black? Have you experienced the, the suffering that our people have gone through and still going through it? Having another group to come up in line and get in front of us. You, you got the right one on this mic. You got the right one. Mr. Blakemore, we got children here. Now you be respectful. I am respectful. And I'm advocating for the black children because you all trying to gentle for us out and you in for jobs, goods, contracts, and service. Who do you think I am or who are you? Who, if they clap, I can say boo. Uh, if they clap again, I can say boo. I'm strictly advocating for black people and call ice on them. Trump, come in here, clean this mess up. The most corrupt city in the United States is the city of Chicago. And that's not my- Thank you, Mr. Blakemore, for your comments. Well, Mr. Blakemore, he was, he was definitely fired up. Now, look, now let me tell you something. You know the message is getting out there, ladies and gentlemen. Every talking point Mr. Blakemore was saying that is don't come from the boule. It don't come from joy Reed. It don't come from any of those types. That conversation he had verbatim come from the grassroots, the black media on this side. You understand? He hit every talking point that we are not immigrants because we're not. When they try to say, oh, black Americans left the South and came to the North. Some, not all. Trust me, it's some. The majority of black America is proven. The majority of black people still live in our ancestral homeland, the South. It's only a small number that was scattered and went in a great migration. And how do you immigrate from the South to the North? There's no immigration. You're not going to a different country, a different government a different system. It's the same country, same government, same system. 
That's like someone living in South Africa and they move from Cape Town and then they move, let's say they move, go up there to Johannesburg or something. Did they immigrate from uh, uh, the, the southern part in, in South, uh, Cape Town? It's the same freaking country, right? They're trying to do everything they can, these Democrat shields, to try to put us in the same line with people that have nation states, that have embassies in the United States of America, right? They have their own passports to these nations. We, that's why we never can be equal to an immigrant because we don't have a nation state outside of America. We don't have a, black folks don't have an embassy. What, where do we come from? Now they say, Oh, well you guys came from the continent of Africa. Okay. Where at then there's no nation state right now in the continent of Africa and say, Hey, they all came from here. And if you come back here, the moment you step foot in the airport, then we're going to take you to immigration and we're going to get you, go ahead and get your citizenship going right then and there because you go ahead on and come back home. Right. We don't have that. So, so what do you, so what are they talking about that? We are like the immigrants. If, 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 if something happened bad in America, the, all the immigrants, they can leave and go to back to their homeland. If it got bad in this country, you know, y'all watching the movie, like, uh, you know, uh, leave the world behind all that sort of thing. And, you know, if they would have some power grid, they'll go down or some war or something happened in this country. Those immigrants wouldn't be fighting a thing. They'll be on the first thing fighting to get out this country or through a plane or, or, or crossing borders or whatever. Cause how they got in exactly how they were doggone get out and they got a place to go. Black America don't have a place to go unless we get ahead of the curve and figure out, okay, let's make sure all my family have passports. Let me make sure that I have a place somewhere in case something go down. I can go. If we don't think like that, we don't have nowhere else to go. So no, we can never be in comparison to any kind of migrant, immigrant, etc. This brother say we built this country, right? Which is the truth. Immigrants can't say they built this country from scratch. They can't say they are the foundation of this country. They can't say they innovated this country. They can't say that. I'm not saying the immigrants didn't work in it. I'm not saying they didn't do a couple of things here and there, but I'm talking about what we have done. No, they Johnny come lately. Period. Now I know because well, well, the clip that they kept showing, because you know over here we're gonna look into things a little more, was the part about when he said we need to bring Trump in here, clean this up. That's the only part they kept clipping. But they didn't they didn't play the whole clip that I, I played for y'all about this brother. They didn't want to play that because they don't want that message out there where black folks are saying this. Chicago is corrupt. Brandon Johnson and the Democrats are corrupt because they don't want the sanctuary city status put on the ballot. Like it should be put on the ballot. So the people can decide if they want to be a sanctuary city or not. I don't want to hear talk from Brandon Johnson complaining about migrants and you won't get rid of sanctuary city. You playing games with the citizens. Now let's get to our sister here. You got another sister that's going to come up and she's going to follow behind our brother here. Let's go ahead and roll that. Good morning. My name is Loran Lawrence, so that all of you all know that I am representing multiple communities. Let's start with Brighton Park. Let's start with Alston. And let's also go with East Morgan Park. All of these communities that I have been out there with them protesting for these unsanctioned rights that has been going on here. It's just crazy. I'm gonna get started with a few things since I got three minutes. Number one, I'm a native to Chicago. I was born and raised here. I've seen the changes. Don't let the age fool you for how I look because I've been here a long time. I have seen things just transition as if a lot of people are not important here. I'm not for the sanctuary city. And the reason why I'm not for the sanctuary city is because people have waited years to come in here legally, not just transported on these buses, dropped off in our neighborhoods, rays of crime, almost got hit several times just making it down here today. And this is 
ludicrous. There should not be two sets of laws. Also, the west side and the south side black communities have been earmarked for having funds, never seen it. We're still waiting on those funds to come into those communities. Brandon Johnson, many people stood behind you. They feel let down because the day you came into office, which I believe was May 15th, you already had signed an uh, executive order. Now, rather it came from Governor Prisker or whomever that directed you on this. Is it fair to these communities that have been waiting for years? You said you're on the west side, but you should know what's going on over there as well. Let's also talk about the things that I witnessed about crimes that are going on. Also, just watching my neighbor hook up electric, okay? Why reroute the gas? burning grass on the lawn. When are you going to have our neighborhoods cleaned up? And when are we going to get the rights that we deserve? I'm not against anyone coming in here legally. I want to say that clearly. But for those who have not, they don't top us. They don't go before us. We're not last in line. $9,000 going to illegals, but those who live here have not gotten funding yet. Many people homeless. My husband is a veteran. Now you know I got a heart for that. But let, we got a lot of these on the street. And I also have been the one that worked in food pantries, also helping people who are on the streets. They need to be taken care of. They need to stop being neglected because if we don't have a voice here, we will have a voice out there. And those older men who are not caring, okay. You know, that sister brought a, a good point. It isn't fair to the people who have went through the process legally to become a citizen of this country or get a residency. It isn't fair that these people get to jump the line. It isn't fair that they don't have to pay anything. It isn't fair. They don't have to pay no taxes, but yet they get to pull resources from, you know, America. Then you dropping people off in black people's neighborhoods, which black folks don't have resources as it is. You know, they, they trying to, to squeeze juice out of a turnip, you know, with, with, with in our neighborhood. But as the sister said, you giving them $9,000. I say that every citizen in Chicago should be at city hall talking about, Hey, Brandon Johnson. Um, I need my $9,000 check, brother. I need that because if you can give it to them and they won't have to pay no taxes, then surely I need it. Cause I've been paying taxes in this city for a very long time. And I got rent to pay just like everybody else. Now this situation because you got to think about it. This situation is where it is because the Democrats and Brandon Johnson refuse, refuse, refuse. They don't care. Even if it hurts the migrants themselves, they say they don't have the facilities to house the people. All you have to do is in sanctuary cities at status and this stuff can stop. But the Democrats have an agenda and it's not an agenda of the people. You have to take care of your people first in other countries. And I travel to them. You know, who's more important, the citizens of their country, not foreigners. But in America, they prioritize everybody else except the American citizen. There are so many American citizens that are getting so upset and how this government is moving with the Democrats and the Republicans too. That many American citizens are saying, you know what, man, I'm done with this place. And they're leaving. And I'm saying, and I say American people. I didn't say black people. I say American people. A lot of white people are leaving. I meet black folks all the time when I travel. And a lot of them are either moved or they at the door of moving. And they got about two to three years left in America to clean up their affairs. And they out. They even got migrants that was here going back to their homeland because they're seeing how difficult it is to live here because when they get here, I say, wow, I didn't realize it was like this. Oh, it's so expensive. I, I can afford, you know, a whole house, uh, food, everything off of one job where I come from over here. I can't afford that. My wife can't stay home and take care 
of my children. She actually has to go to work over here. They all starting to find out the hard way how difficult it is in America. And unless you're making high income, America's going is getting becoming very, very difficult for people who are low income, middle class. It's getting very hard. And, and, and a lot of people who, who's traveling are discovering that, man, I can live a, a, a life I used to live 20 years ago, 20 some more years ago, maybe 30 years ago. I can live like I used to live in the nineties. I can go pay four or $500 for a place to stay a month and live very good. My kids can afford a place to stay outside this place. That's what some people are, are figuring out because it isn't fair that you work, 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 and they give everything to, to other people. So some people are taking it that route. Some people won't, but some people will. I'm going to tell y'all have all your children <laughs> and yourself get a passport. Not even if you don't go nowhere, have it. Cause you never know what's going on. All these people, all these movies coming out, talking about different things. And I always say, prepare, prepare and prepare some more prepare because the people are getting real sick and tired of what these politicians are doing. And it, and it may come to a head one day. And some of you may not want to be in the midst of that. I know as black folks, we don't need to be in the midst of any of that. We don't. But during the watch of Biden, there was a reporter on C-SPAN that asked Biden about this migrant crisis, which is something of his own creation. Now I want you to hear how Biden responds to this reporter about what's happening with the migrants. Let's go ahead and roll that. Mr. President, why is the border more overwhelmed? On the border, why is the border more overwhelmed under your watch, Mr. President? Because there are three countries that are never had, there are fewer, there are fewer immigrants coming from Central America and from Mexico. This is a totally different circumstance. What's on my watch now is Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua. And the ability to send them back to those states is not rational. You could send them back and have them wait. We're working with Mexico and other countries to see if we can stop the flow. But that's the difference. Thank you. Well, President, you're President, you're President, 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 sending uh, migrants to Delaware. Do you have any comment or response to that, sir? He should come visit. We have a beautiful shoreline. Now, that was Biden's response to what this reporter, you know, was asking him about, hey, why is so horrible on your watch? Well, it's so horrible because he rescinded the remain in Mexico policy. That's what got it started. Once he rescinded the remain in Mexico policy, they flooded this country. That's what it was. And he's not doing nothing about it. The border patrol is overwhelmed in the state of Texas. They trying to do their best to stop him, Right. But this man hasn't literally an open border. And these people have been saying the migrants, that they've been told to come. They've been told to come. Notice the reporters never get deep dive in and say, okay, who told you who, what organization keep telling you to come who they never say who the mainstream media is only going to do so much because they are in on everything too. This is why we are focusing on building our app because well, we have our app on the Google play and Apple app store. And we are trying to get to our 10,000 members. Cause by the time we get to 10,000 members, at least it can free us up to do a little bit more investigative journalism that we really want to get into that the mainstream media got funds for, right? Cause that kind of stuff costs money, you know, flights, hotels, you know, staff, all that costs money. None, none of that's free, right? but we want to do more investigative journalism and building up our app and having members there that, you know, join a membership, have a paying membership. It helps make sure we have the funds coming in to do that because I'm the type of person that I want to know. I want to hear from the horse's mouth, like from migrants myself. Hey, who told you what, what, what message on WhatsApp did you get who it came from? I, we want to know this. Just like how Fox go down there and everybody else, we need to do the same thing as a community because they're not going to tell the full story. They know who's telling them. 
They know we're organizationized rumors that the Catholic church is behind a lot of it. We hear that too. We hear rumors that the Catholic church is paying a lot of the migrants because you know, good and well to pay the cartels, the migrant people don't have money like that. So, so the money is definitely coming through people. that got deep pockets. This is an agenda they're doing. This is a complete agenda. And this agenda is being used to circumvent Americans. When you can see a lot of Americans right now are having this awakening about pay. They having this awakening about school and all this, this stuff and say, wait a minute, we getting the bad end of the stick. No, you know, all this quiet quitting y'all doing and, and all of that, uh, demanding you be paid right. Oh no, no, no. They're not going to pay you. You are not going to have a job. You're going to be homeless because them corporations, y'all have to understand something. These corporations in America came up through slavery, free labor. This country has always had free labor or if they had to pay for labor it was going to be minimal. First it goes to free labor from slavery. Then they, you know, out of slavery, they still try to keep free labor with convict leasing. They still try to keep free labor with a uh, 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 sharecropping. When white folks wanted jobs and they wanted to get paid right, they said, nope, let's bring all the black folks in because we ain't got to pay them much. And the white folks was mad about that at black folks. Some of the blacks are taking our jobs and all of that because they were paying them less. Now black folks saying you got to pay us right. And they say, no, we not. We're going to go bring people from Latin America and we're going to pay them them low wages and they're going to be happy with it. And you not going to have a job. That's, that's really the plan right there. They're not going to let these people rise up into no high ranks. They're not going to let them be in any kind of power. They're going to keep them in low, uh, 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 skill labor. That's what they want them at. Hope cleaning your hotels, being your garbage truck, uh, uh, people, uh, 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 working fast food, your Walmart, all the major corporations, the jobs that a lot of you don't want. Those people are being bust in, in the millions to take those jobs and the jobs they do take the other part. AI is going to take, and it's going to be more American citizens that don't have a job and you will end up homeless. This is the plan from these corporations. This is the plan for those migrants. They want them to work those jobs because you didn't got way too uppity. That's the word I'm going to use you American citizens. You didn't got way too uppity and these corporations do not want to pay what they should be paying. And this is why all those billionaires are even leaving the country all got bunkers now because it may be a time y'all get pissed off and want to get at them. Well, you're not gonna be able to find them because either gonna be in a bunker or they're going to be out this country somewhere. All these major people who are billionaires and, and all of that, all of them are, are, are building bunkers or all of them are got other property. When I was in South Africa, they showed me Oprah's property. They say, Hey, that's Oprah's house right there. I said, Oh, Oprah got a big, that's a huge house. That's Oprah's house. He said, yeah, that's Oprah Winfrey's house right there. And there's a rumor also going around that she may be leaving the country, going to Switzerland too with some money. Yeah. They all, they all move around these people with money, black, white, it don't matter. The being their class is, is, in, in the, the rich and elite, that's, they move like that. They're not going to be in a position where y'all could touch them. No, but you better believe all those migrants coming in. is going to do the McDonald's jobs, the Burger King jobs. The migrants going to be working at Starbucks in the airports and everywhere. Trust me. You be like, wow, what you gonna look up and say, where's all the black and white people? Like they don't work no more. I'm telling you, that's what you're about to see all over this country. You will be wondering where all the black and white people at. You're not going to see them. You're not, not in these jobs. Like we see them today. I'm telling you, you vote Biden in for another four years. His job will be complete and none of you would have a job no more. And now them kind of jobs. Now the migrants can't take a job. Like, you know, if you build a business and, and certain things like that, it takes, you know, certain skills you may have a migrant can't do, you know, can't take that from you. You built that that's yours. Right. But if you depend on the folks, that's why I tell my people 
to focus on entrepreneurship like our ancestors did. They built their own. So you don't have to worry about no migrants. You like that's 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 on them. I'm doing this. Right? No one can take your job from you. If you built it, nobody can take it. Only you could ruin your own job. That is the per this is the this situation with the migrants actually may not be a bad thing for black America because it's going to force us to do for self. Like we've been told forever, do for self, do for self, do for self. The minister told us, the honorable Elijah Muhammad told us, do for self, do for self, do for self. Some of you reject doing for self. You think the government going to take care of you. I'm going to force this government. Listen, this government is never going to take care of us right. Cause it's not meant for them to everything we need is already within us. We got the, we got the smarts. We got the voice. We got the influence. We got it all. All we got to do is unify, execute, make it happen. Migrants is not really going to be our problem like that. But as long as you're trying to depend on these folks, yeah, that's going to be a problem. You say they're competing with us. If you're competing with them from a McDonald's job, if you're competing with them, we say, well, no, it's not just McDonald's. I see them on construction jobs too. Yeah, they doing that. It sure is. But if you created your own company, nobody could take your job. I'm just keeping it 100. That is the plan for them. That's the plan. They going to do all the jobs and not get paid crap because that same construction job, maybe they have to pay you 30 bucks, but they can pay that migrant 10, $8. Some of them when you making $8 a day in their homeland. So they making $8 an hour. Shoo boy. That's some good money for them. All in America better wake up, but that's the plan. You keep playing around with talking about, Ooh, we sanctuary city and Ooh, this and that and the third. And it, okay. Okay. Brandon Johnson's going to be fine. Trust me. Even if y'all vote him out of office, Brandon Johnson is going to be fine. Joe Biden, you vote him out of office. He's going to be fine. You the one who have a problem. All them Democrat politicians, they good. Trust me. They good. You the one going to have the issue. So you need to think about this. What was what you see going on? The rapid acceleration of the migrants coming into this country. Oh, they, 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 they definitely got plans for them. Their plan is mass incarceration. The plan is to get all of you out of them jobs. That's the plan. But we'll see if they keep playing with this sanctuary city status. How much more are they going to keep playing with it? Because this, this problem is definitely a black America problem, but all people in America going, this going to be touch them. I'm telling you, mark my words.